Hey everyone, here's everything you need to know about Excel's geocharts. I get asked about this all the time, so let's just hop right into it. First thing you need to know, these charts are going to work for cities, postal codes, states, regions, and countries, but not for really, really granular things like street addresses or latitude and longitude. When you're creating a geochart, you do have to be connected to the internet. Once you've created it, it can be viewed by other people while they're offline, but actually generating them requires them to send your data to the Bing Maps engine. So if you're creating these or editing them, you got to make sure that you're online. The data you use to create these has to have at least one column with types of locations and one column with some kind of value. If you're having trouble plotting something like a city name and it's showing up in the wrong area, you can add extra columns as well. Maybe add an extra column with the country and then a separate column with the city name and it's going to have a much easier time plotting that in the right location. You're often going to see this little error up in the upper right saying, we haven't been able to plot all your locations, we only plotted 20% or something with high confidence. This is going to happen a lot more if you have blanks in your data because it's a blank, it can't reference it. But essentially all it's saying is, we were trying to look for every single cell using the Bing map engine and some of them we could find, some of them we couldn't. So you drop in a geochart by just selecting your data, going to the insert tab and hitting the map section and clicking your map. Keep in mind, you cannot create a map chart from a pivot table. If you try to, it's going to throw an error. So if you really need to use a pivot table, you're going to have to replicate the table separately. You can just reference the cells in your pivot table over in a separate table. It's a bit of a pain, but it does work. I've got a bunch of videos that explain how to do that whole process on my profile. So how does a geochart actually work? It's essentially taking all of your values and setting up where they sit across a gradient of colors. So in this case, one side of our gradient is bright yellow, the other side of our gradient is this kind of dark gray. And so the one with the highest value has the brightest yellow and the one with the lowest value has the darkest gray. Simple as that. To customize these, you just right click on there, go to format data series, and then over in this little menu, we have a few options. Map projection, just keep it automatic. You probably are not going to need to worry about that. Map area is important. If you only want to show regions with data, because you're focused on a specific region of a country or something like that, you should know the options there. It can be really helpful. And if you need to zoom out, you can zoom out to the whole country. You could zoom out to multiple countries around it. Or you can even zoom out to show the entire world. But obviously it gets harder and harder to interpret the more you zoom out, right? So we're going to often keep this at automatic or uh, at the country and region level in most cases. So for map labels, you can do best fit only. Now, this whole idea is this. If I label all of these states, some of the names are going to be too long to fit in each state, right? So best fit only is going to say, hey, only show names that actually fit in the size of the chart I have. Or you can show all, in which case it's going to plot them in there, but crop the name part of the way through so you won't see the whole name. For your gradient color, you're essentially having a sequential or diverging. Sequential is just a simple gradient like you see here, like I explained earlier. Diverging is useful if you're dealing with data that has a neutral midpoint. So say a political spectrum, people far left, people far right, people in the middle. That's the situation where a div diverging gradient style is going to be useful, but most of the time you're just going to be using sequential. To set up your gradient and select which colors on either side, you're just going to select them here. Uh, typically you're going to be using lowest value and highest value. So highest value is one color, lowest value is the other. But you can also set this up in such a way that it is referencing a number as your minimum value or a percent as your minimum value. You can play around with that if you're having trouble getting your gradient to look right, but I say typically just stick with lowest and highest value here. Okay, we're through the boring stuff. Let's get into just the other parts of making this look cool. So we've talked about how to deal with those either side of your gradient. That's how all of the states with data will get plotted or all of your regions with data will get plotted. But what about the ones that don't have data? To format those, you're just clicking into your geochart, going over here and changing your fill color. Now, I think if you want to show that there's no data, it can be fun sometimes to turn the transparency up a little bit or just make it a kind of neutral background color. If you want to create this kind of 3D effect you see here, you'll see that in a few of my other geocharts as well. You can just do that in this middle menu and then select drop shadow. Uh, you might have to play around with it a little bit to get your drop shadow the right size, but this can be a fun little trick as well, especially if you want to float the map on top of something like you see here. So here's the thing. Geocharts aren't actually super effective for communicating with your data. It's hard to interpret how much higher California is than say New Mexico here, right? Our brains aren't very good at interpreting gradient color schemes to show values. 
it would be way more effective to just use a bar chart or something. But they are really great at getting people engaged and excited about their data. I use them a lot just as kind of like the shiny object to get people to look at the other data on the page. They also can be useful at almost like a UI tool, meaning they help you understand what region you're looking at and what area you're looking at. So maybe I can't tell how much higher one is than the other, but I at least know I'm looking at this western section of the US here. If I changed my location like this, the map's going to reflect that, and it's a good reminder of what data I'm actually looking at. You can even use maps as kind of like a design element. In this case, this map doesn't have any real data tied to it. It's really just being used as like a design element that then gives our data kind of a broader context. If you want a copy of any of the templates you saw here, I just send them out for free on my newsletter. They're just tutorial templates. That's all I send out there. It's just a way to give people something to look at and an actual file to play with as they follow along with the videos. Totally free. You're welcome to join if you want. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.